you built Richie Escalante's. Yeah. Won the championship with that. Yes. Uh, then you built Stefano Mesa's. Yes. And that is one of the top competitive bikes in next generation super sport. Yes, that's correct. So this bike has got a couple of little changes to the uh, intake length, uh, cam duration. It's all pretty moderate changes. Yep. Um, but can you tell me a little bit about how you prepared Stefano Mesa's uh, race winning CX6R? Sure, sure. Um, well, we would start with a street bike like this and we would strip it down completely and, uh, and build it from the ground up. But of course, um, all of the things that we're doing are things that we've worked with riders at the racetrack to develop. Now, whether it's the settings or um, the engine specs to find uh, you know, limits on service life and that type of thing. So um, Stefano Mesa's bike would be the highest level um, super sport bike we could make within the rules, right? He would have all the data and, you know, big radiators and camshafts and valve springs and ev everything, you know, different clutch, many, 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 many changes. Um, if you wanted to know specifics, I could give you a build list on what that looks like, which we do have, right? I mean, yeah. Email it to me. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, uh, one of the unique things about the next generation super sport class is that they're trying to include a lot of manufacturers making very different engine architectures and then performance indexing them to get competitive racing yeah i, I you know i just super let's say this super sport racing has been competitive from the beginning I haven't seen, uh, uh, you know, where the five guys aren't shooting it out in super sport from as long back as long back as when I was racing in the very beginning. When I mean, super Miguel Duhamel was pretty dominant we, there for a while, but not running away. There were always five guys going for it, right? On in in general, and and we have next gen. I mean, if you look at next gen this year, you will see the Ducati ran away in a, at, you know. 50% of the races in the in the first half of the season. It was just all Ducati, all out on their own. 900 cc's versus poor little 600s, right? And so, um, I don't know that that uh, balancing really really has changed anything. If if anything, um, I think what happens is um, the guy who doesn't win doesn't feel like it was balanced, and the guy who does win feels like it's balanced. <laughs> So I, I don't know, you know. It's so it's given the riders a different excuse oh, compared well, I, to I like my tire was out of round or something. Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would, I wouldn't say that. I would just say that, um, look, it's, uh, you know, guys are trying stuff, right? They're trying stuff to try to make it work. Um, I just, I don't, I don't know that, it, 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 that um, controlling it that the way they're trying to do it is necessarily the right answer. But I don't, I don't have the right answer for super sport either. Right. I mean, I, it's worked really well over the years from, from how it was developed in America, which was street bike manufacturers building uh, production-based motorcycles that raced against each other to prove on Sunday whose bike was best so it would sell on Monday. And so these things sort of evolved from a grassroots level. And as maybe uh, as manufacturers begun to steer away from manufacturing 600s, that class goes away. There's always something new at the grassroots level building itself back up so um you know I, I i don't i don't know really i but i do see i see so much energy at uh and with some of these new motorcycles that are coming into the into the marketplace like the zx4 so um you know the grassroots thing is and and manufacturers fighting it out to prove their machine is the best in class is is really what super sports is about Obviously, not many people run top-level next-generation super sport teams, right? right? Like yeah. five, maybe something like that, yeah. um, six. But um, right, if we look at the race winners from 2023, mm. there was uh, Ducati got a bunch. Uh, the R6 got 
one, the Suzuki's gotten one, and the 636 has gotten one. In 23 or 24? What year are we? Oh, I'm sorry, 23? Aren't we uh, in 23? Yeah, yeah, we're talking 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the Kawasaki. I like your one. forward thinking, though. Yeah, You're like, I'm, I'm already on to 2024, yeah, I'm, and I'm the Kawasaki's going to win all, all of the races. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> and none of those bikes are inexpensive no. anymore. No, no, they're all expensive. But it seems to me, if I look at the bike that you can buy, and then the modifications that you would have to do to build it into a uh, race winning machine. The 636 is the most efficient choice. Well, I would, you know, I, 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 can't, I can't, I don't know. I, I haven't done the math on the other guy's bikes. So that, that would be the challenge to understand. I mean, I think you have to have a very specific set of electronics on the other next gen bikes and what these guys are spending on them to develop those. Uh, whether it works for them, I, you know, I don't really have that answer. I, I do know this is the 636 is a really economical way to, to go racing for sure. And they have a great contingency program in the club races. And, um, and it's super simple to take a street bike and turn it into a track day or race bike. The, the other units, I, you know, I, I, I don't have enough information on. I was just thinking about it from the extent of the modifications that are legal under the rules, mm. and this has the fewest modifications allowed. Right. So, with, with the exception of Stefano Mesa, <laughs> we had to buy. Oh, we had to tell me about because, yes. Because we tell had me to, about we had to add tell me about Stefano because, Mesa's weight gain because, program. Yeah, because Stefano Mesa is the smallest rider in the class, right? Or maybe not the smallest, but a very small rider. He has to add 25 pounds of lead. We had to add 25 pounds of lead to his bike. And a rider combined weight. There is a rider combined weight. It's a rider weight. combined weight. So because Stefano is light, because you had Stefano. to add more weight. Right. It's so like a he, jockey. So the, effectively they penalize his machine because he's just under a certain amount of weight. Because, so the rider and machine combined would be too light. So they force him to be at this other minimum, which a guy that's slightly taller, a little lankier, who's able to um, hang off the bike further or sit up higher and, and move his weight around the machine, as you know, you know, changing the center of gravity and moving it from the front to the back or from down low to up high changes the way the machine handles, right? And so the, the, I argue that the taller, skinnier guy has really um, an advantage over the smaller guys. In aerodynamics, on the stri when we used to go to the wind tunnel, some of the taller guys with longer, flatter torsos, they, ha they close the air out better and were much more slipperier than, than short guys like, say, J Jason DeSalvo. So to, to, to always believe that we should, we should go off of weight for top speed, it, just, it, it doesn't add up. So, so does Graves sell a performance line of bolt-on lead weights to bring your bike No, as a matter of fact, Graves is in California and we're not allowed to mess with lead in California. Because so, of Prop 65. Right, so so uh, we actually had to, it took us a lot of work to come up with 25 pounds and fit it in, in all the places around the motorcycle and still keep the machine in a, in a uh, let's just say, in a balanced state, right? It was actually quite a lot of work to do. I bet. Yeah. I mean. So that's what I was going to say. It was very costly. There's not. <laughs> it costs a lot more money to add the weight than people would think. So the trick is, is uh, you need to have a rider that, or you have to be a rider that weighs over uh, 165 pounds or something. You no, know, the like... trick is not to be try to just try not to be so tricky and let's just go racing. Right? Oh. And if well, a guy is talking about the rules committee. Yeah. I mean, let's just not make these things so complicated. Yeah. Let's just go racing and have a good time and. And the guy who wins then, you know, crosses checkered flag first. It's still going to be the same. There's always going to be five guys that can get it done, right? Well, you and I are certainly in agreement on